Welcome back to another video, and today we're taking a look at this 2021 Vitus Mythique VRS. And unfortunately, this is not my bike. Why do I have this bike? This bike is for my friend Scott's girlfriend Taylor. It is her first full suspension mountain bike and the reason it's at my house is I've been known to work on Scott's bikes or build up his new bikes whenever he gets one. They live up in Austin about an hour and a half north of me so rather than me having to drive up there bring all my tools and put it together for him I said, let's just go ahead and ship it to my house. That way I can put it together in my garage and they're gonna come pick it up this weekend. If you aren't familiar with the Mythique, it is a very popular entry level full suspension bike and they are a very hard to beat value. There's three models in the Mythique lineup, the entry level VR that retails for $1,649, the middle of the line VRS, which is this bike and that retails for $1,999, and then there's the top of the line VRX, which retails for $2,199. All three versions of the Mythique you can get in either 27.5 or 29 inch wheels. This is the 29 inch model in a size medium, and it has 140 millimeters of travel front and rear. Since this isn't my bike and it's brand new, I'm not gonna be able to ride it, but I figured it'd be helpful to actually visualize and see the bike if you are interested in purchasing this. I'm actually quite jealous. This thing is really, really cool for $2,000. I think it was about $2,150 shipped to my door. So I'll take you on a tour and um, you'll see why this is a very popular budget-friendly option. The fork is an X-Fusion Slide RC Boost and the rear shock is the X-Fusion O2 Pro R. The entry-level Mythique VR comes with the X-Fusion RC32, which uses 32 millimeter stanchions, but this slide RC uses 34 millimeter stanchions, which I think is a very nice upgrade over the entry level model. I've actually never ridden on X Fusion suspension, so I can't say if it's good or bad. When I put air in, in, in the shocks and I was just kind of like pushing through its travel, it felt fine. I know I can't really judge it based on pushing it up and down in my garage a little bit, but yeah, it, it definitely didn't feel like the worst fork I've ever felt. I am glad it's a 34 millimeter stanchion up front. 32 millimeter stanchions, especially on a longer travel, bigger bike, uh, you can definitely feel some flex in them. So 34 millimeter stanchions should be perfect for most people. Wheels are the WTB STI 30 with Vitus branded hubs. And for tires, it has the Schwalbe Magic Mary up front and the Hans Dampf out back. I've personally never ridden on Schwalbe tires, but I gotta say these things look really nice. They look incredibly aggressive and, and, and very durable. If you do want to upgrade these tires, it doesn't look like there's much more clearance. You might be able to get a 2.5 on the back here, uh, but it is pretty tight. Same on the front. I'll look up the specs. I don't know if it says I just looked it up and I was right. The largest tire this will fit is 2.5. I called it. I, I've, I've got a good eye, I guess, for measuring small things. <laughs> so when you buy this bike, the wheels are already taped and ready to be converted tubeless. All you gotta do is pull the tube out, put a stem in, pour some sealant in, and you're good to go. And I have to say it was one of the easiest and fastest tubeless conversions I've ever done. Maybe that's a thing of Schwalbe tires. They're, they're super easy to convert tubeless. I don't know, but I was done in like five minutes. It was incredible, incredible. It does have through axles front and rear. So you've got the 15 by 110 up front and the 12 by 148 out back. Good job, Vetus. You'll probably notice that all the cabling is routed externally which it doesn't look the greatest, but I do appreciate it when it comes time to change cables. It's a lot simpler process than having internally routed cables. If you're OCD and you like your bike looking super clean, unfortunately, you're gonna have to have all your cables routed on the outside here. Even though the cables are here, it does have water bottle bosses on the down tube. That's a nice feature. Moving on to the drivetrain, it is a Shimano Dior, 
but it's actually the 11 speed and not the 12 speed. And that's not really a big deal to me because it still has the 11 to 51 tooth cassette. So you're still getting that monstrous climbing gear. You're just missing out on a gear somewhere in the middle. For comparison purposes, the entry level VR Mythique comes with Shimano 10 speed and it only has, I believe, an 11 to 46 tooth range. So on this bike, you're definitely gonna be able to climb a lot easier. And then on the top of the line VRX, you do get the 12 speed, but I believe it's just a 10 to 51 tooth range. You're getting a little bit smaller top end gear, which most people won't notice a difference, honestly. So I'm not gonna fault it for having an 11 speed as long as it has that 51 tooth climbing gear. It does have built-in chainstay protection. It's actually nice rubber, looks pretty good, and actually has a little protector right here behind the uh, chain ring, which I've never seen before, I don't think, on a bike. Speaking of protection, there's even a rubber protector here on the seat stay, so that's, that's pretty cool. You don't see that too often. Brakes are the Shimano MT401. Two piston brakes, but they do have 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. The disc rotors do say resin pads only. So if you want to upgrade those pads, you'll have to upgrade your rotors. These brakes are fine, I suppose. I wouldn't spend money upgrading them. I'm sure they will work fine for average trail riding. Definitely not a brake you'd probably want to use on a downhill course. Handlebars and stem are provided by Nukeproof. They are both the Nukeproof Neutron. Oddly enough, on the Vetus website, it says this stem is a Vetus branded stem, but this one arrived with a Neutron stem, a very good looking stem and bar combo. The saddle, if you care, is also Nukeproof Neutron branded. And another great thing, this bike also comes with a dropper post. This is the Brand X Ascend dropper post with 120 millimeters of travel on this size medium. The large and extra large get 150 millimeter post and the size small gets 100 millimeters of travel. As you can see, it's sticking out pretty far. That's not set for anyone's particular height. That's just the way it came. Personally, I'd rather see a 150 millimeter dropper on a size medium and then a 170 or 200 on the large and extra larges, but that's just a little nitpicky thing. And if you care, it has generic Vitus lock-on grips. Most people are probably gonna change those out. Other nice features, this does have a threaded bottom bracket. I don't see any ISCG tabs, so you can't run a bash guard or anything like that on this bike. And probably one of the big questions you have is how much does this thing weigh? Well, I can tell you because I weighed it. With tubes, it weighed 34.4 pounds. That is without pedals. And then once I converted it to tubeless, still no pedals, it weighed 33.6 pounds. And I'm honestly pretty impressed with that weight, especially the 33.6. Even my Nukeproof reactor, which is probably twice as expensive as this bike, weighs more than this. I think it weighs 34, 35 pound range, which um, is kind of shocking. So that's a pretty impressive weight for this bike for the price. So I'll go ahead and touch on the geometry really quick because no one wants to sit here and listen to me ramble off uh, geometry chart numbers. The head tube angle on this is 66.06 .06 degrees and the effective seat tube angle is 75.73 degrees. Very specific geometry numbers and this size medium has a reach of 444.35. That is also very specific. Why did Scott and Taylor go with this middle of the line instead of the top of the line for just $200 more? Well, because this one was in stock, the other one wasn't. For $200 extra, dollars, I think the VRX probably makes more sense to a lot of people. It comes with the Marzocchi Bomber Z2 fork, which has outstanding reviews. People seem to love that fork. And then the rear shock will be a RockShox Monarch R. Otherwise, between this and the VRX, the spec is kind of the same. On the VRX, you are getting a 12-speed. The cassette is the Dior 12-speed, but you do get an SLX rear derailleur. You get the MT501 Shimano brakes. I don't know the difference between those and the 401s. I doubt there's much difference. Like the stem, bars, all that are the same. You get the same dropper post, uh, same tires and wheels. And then on the flip side, if you are looking at the entry-level VR, I definitely think that it's worth upgrading to this. You get a nicer fork with 
thicker stanchions. They both use the same rear shock. You're getting that 11 to 51 tooth gear range on the drivetrain. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same. Between the three, if I were to buy one, I probably would get the VRX. Putting this bike together was super easy from Chain Reaction Cycles. Literally all I had to do is put the front tire on and the handlebars. Dropper post was already installed. It worked. It shifted great right out of the box. I did go through, torque everything down, make sure it's all torqued to spec. It was. Scott and Taylor will have to mess with the suspension uh, to get it set up for her. I didn't want to ask a woman's weight. The only issue I did have was the rear brake. It definitely needed a lever bleed when I got it. Sorry, I didn't film it, but when you pulled the lever, it went all the way to the bar. There was just no pressure on it at all. It just felt like it was disconnected completely. I did just a quick lever bleed that fixed the problem. Everything's working great. Just a really, really nice bike. So there you have it. That is an overview of this Vitus Mythique VRS. I hope that was helpful if you're in the market for one of these. It's a really impressive value. I wish I could ride it and tell you a little bit more about it. I'm sure Scott and Taylor wouldn't mind, but it's her first brand new full suspension bike. I'm gonna let her have the first ride on it. I'd feel like a dick if I took it out on the first ride and got all dirty before she does. Scott can review it. He has his own YouTube channel. Be sure to check that out. I'm sure he'll definitely make some videos about this. And if he doesn't, sorry for getting your hopes up. I know I recommend Vita Spikes a lot on those list videos I make, but the value proposition here is pretty impressive. If you do want one of these bikes on ChainReactionCycles.com, you can go in there, pick out the one you want, and set up a notification. You'll get an email once it comes back in stock, and then you literally have to drop whatever you're doing at that moment and buy it. Because if you don't, someone else will. This bike is so incredibly popular, and I get why now. After seeing it in person, I'm like, this is a really nice bike. Even if this was $3,000, I think people would still be very excited about it, but it's not, it's $2,000. And if you're new to mountain biking or you have a limited budget, this should be on your short list for sure. As of right now, it's April 30th. I checked this morning. It said in the next four weeks, this bike should be back in stock. So I'll probably post this next week. This bike should be available in three to four weeks. If you're watching this further down the line, Sorry, I can't predict the future. That's all I've got on this Vitus Mythique VRS. Thank you so much for watching this. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing. And if you've been here a while, I appreciate you for sticking around. Let me know what you think of the Vitus Mythique down in the comments below. And I hope I haven't been mispronouncing Vitus this whole video. Vitus sounds a little bit more French, which is where this company is based out of. So I'm going with that. I apologize if I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate your time. And until the next one, stay rowdy within reason.